my name is Jishan Guo, and I'm an assistant professor in the electrical computer engineering department. Uh, thank you, uh, Michael, Subis, and Jennifer for putting this together and the wonderful opportunities to discuss some of our recent research efforts towards integrating machine learning and real-time scheduling series for intelligent cyber-physical systems. A little bit of uh, my background. Uh, did my uh, bachelor's in Tsinghua in China and um, a master's in Hong Kong. And then did my PhD in computer science in UNC Chapel Hill. And I joined uh, UCF before, <coughs> uh, after serving as uh, two years in Missouri Science and Technology as an assistant professor. Uh, after joining UCF, uh, I'm majorly teaching the undergraduate courses, including embedded systems and real-time systems. And on the graduate level, been offering the uh, advanced topics on cyber physical systems and also the real time systems course. So uh, my research, uh, we uh, highly uh, we we publish constantly publish in top uh, tier uh, conferences and journals. I, was also, I also do a lot of service to the research community, uh, basically reviewing papers by other colleagues. So a little bit motivation for my research and teaching efforts. We know that um, uh, traditionally cyber physical systems are very simply designed where tasks are uh, assigned to uh, dedicated processors and then they just execute it. So majorly focus was on control theory of the systems. But nowadays as the systems platforms gets more and more complex and also the applications are getting more and more advanced and integrated. It poses new uh, concerns and requirements on the system design level. Uh, for example, we need to be aware of the uh, memory cache contentions or their security leakage or energy concerns. All these, from uh, my background, I've been doing machine learning research for more than eight years and then real-time systems for more than eight years. So it's naturally for us to look at solutions from this perspective. And below I will describe four projects that I'm currently working on in addressing some of these issues. So the first one is the mixed criticality scheduling under system uncertainty. So we know that uh, nowadays these uh, commercial off the shelf processors provide very good, are designed to provide very good average performances. But however, on the same side, because the systems gets more integrated and advanced, the worst case performance becomes worse. And for many of the safety critical systems, we care about worst case uh, temporal correctness, uh, logical and temporal correctness instead of the average. So that severe <coughs> capacities of the systems are actually being wasted because of such requirement of guarantees that lead us to the design of mixed criticality systems where tasks of different importance levels are shared upon the same platform. However, these problems are in general to manage those uh, computing resources under a mixed criticality setting is highly intractable or computationally known as NP hard problems. So we look at uh, approximate solutions and certain mode switch mechanisms for the system so that it could still provide a good throughput under the normal circumstances while guaranteeing worst case uh, the least level of uh, the most important level of correctness. So this is one of the um, works uh, directions that uh, my group has been working on. Uh, we have uh, two example applications. One is this uh, one test scale autonomous driving car with a LiDAR and uh, 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 video uh, sensors. And another is a, actually a collaborative uh, effort with uh, Dr. Huan Choi, uh, also from uh, our college, on this ankle prosthetic model to help the uh, people with uh, limited working functions to perform normal working con uh, under uh, all circumstances. So I believe there are two trends in uh, real-time cyber-physical systems. One of it is it's becoming more and more integrated and larger scale in the era of uh, AI big data. So one of the efforts that we are looking at is how uh, this, uh, what will be the real bottleneck when systems become 
a more and more integrated and larger scale. So one thing we realized that it may not be the computing efforts. It may be on the data storage and the data communication side. So for example, uh, uh, for, for example here, we are looking at uh, new task models that would represent not only the computing efforts, but also the uh, data offloads between, for example, CPU and GPU platforms. That how do we schedule those to guarantee a better throughput? Also, on, even on the computing side, the traditional single task model, uh, single execution model no longer fits today's AI applications. We are looking at task models such as DAGs, theoretic acidic graphs, or even GAN tasks that represents the inter-software parallelism that uh, could potentially be leveraged. And when doing uh, system resource management, we should take care of that. Of course, on the other side, when system becomes integrated, they have shared cache, shared memory, all these issues could lead to potential security concerns. So we are also looking at how we could provide certain time or space isolation to maintain the securityness of the system or privacy of the uh, tasks that's running on these shared platforms. One other direction, I believe, is to become distributed. So basically, a general efforts is no longer actually conducted on a centralized, like a cloud uh, centralized uh, big uh, machine. Actually, today we know that even for cell phones, they are probably more powerful than most of the PCs 10 years ago. So a lot of the uh, machine learning methods actually can be potentially distributed into these uh, scattered devices. We have uh, two examples. One is crowd sensing, one is the air quality uh, sensing and the control. So essentially here we are looking at uh, a specific machine learning algorithm called distributed stochastic gradient uh, descent. We know that uh, most machine learning approaches essentially are non-convex optimization problems. And we find that using stochastic gradient descent, one benefit is that we can design this um, distributed learning mechanisms such that the efforts can be naturally balanced into small devices. And on the other side, the, uh, and then the problem becomes how to coordinate and uh, 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 under this uh, framework. And another uh, side benefit of such design is that data are, that are being collected by end units no longer need to be directly shared with others. So you just do your local training with some limited data and model, and then you pass on the gradients. So you no longer need to share the actual data. That's also privacy preserving in some sense. So this is another direction that we are looking at. And we know these sensings has a, a major problem, which is uh, data can be very sparse and uncertain. So we have to come up with methods that handles fault tolerance, that handles uh, how the, uh, when dimensionality gets too large, can we generate new data uh, to fill in the gaps so that the training model still, uh, re the resulted training model still preserves a high accuracy. So this is another line. So in designing all these uh, uh, systems, we find out that a lot of the cases, it's very important to predict the future, to know the future in some sense. So that leads us to this uh, first uh, project, which is in general called time series analysis. We want to understand what happens in the past, what is happening now, and to predict what will happen in the future. So in general, we find out that uh, we, we, we propose this uh, overall architecture where we find out that uh, pre-processing of the data and human design feature extractions can still be very helpful, even with today's deep learning techniques. We, we cannot just, if we treat it as, as a black box and simply throw the data in, a lot of the cases, the result won't be satisfactory. So, so on the front end, we do data processing, such as in IO scheduling, we find out that uh, in a big data, uh, in a big uh, learning machine, we find out that uh, pre-clustering uh, with, let's say, IP addresses or user uh, behaviors will be very helpful in identifying 
who are accessing which part of the data so that we can make better predictions. On the other side here, it, this, is, this is a uh, text uh, uh, natural language processing uh, model that we're doing. We find out that it's very unbalanced. A lot of the um, text does not appear a lot, but they are very important. So we need to separate the high frequency and low frequency attributes. These are all the pre-processing. And then later on, we also uh, added this attention layers on the low, lower end so that the predictions and forecasting can be more specialized to certain type of uh, events such as hurricanes. And nowadays we're looking at COVID-19 related uh, uh, tasks as well. So uh, my near and long-term plan, uh, so with my training and background on machine learning and the real-time scheduling, so um, I believe uh, cyber physical systems uh, can be applied to many domains, such as smart manufacturing and even nowadays AI-assisted health healthcare. So uh, I see a lot of opportunities and, and potentials of these techniques being used to advance the state of art uh, uh, on, on those uh, application domains. As you know, most of the work actually done by my students. So I would like to appreciate their uh, efforts. And also I want to thank the collaborators I hear I only listed the ones that I have either collaborated writing proposals on or uh, at least uh, like uh, worked heavily on many papers together. I thank you very much for your attention.